Excuse me, that mysterious stranger in the corner. Who is that? It's one of them rangers from the north. Mysterious folk they are. What her real name is, I don't rightly really know, but round here, she's known as an adult. I hope I can be that secretive and intimidating and awesome someday. So, a while back, I saw a meme that really resonated with me. Your 30s are for unlearning all the conformity you picked up in your teens and 20s and getting back to the weirdo you were as a child. I was undeniably a weirdo kid. I have never been normal in my entire life, and I am proud of it. I grew up playing dress up and imagining all kinds of crazy adventures, but it seems like somewhere along the way of becoming a grown up, imaginary adventures and dressing up for funsies seems to fall by the wayside, apart from cosplay and conventions. However, this project threw into sharp relief what I've been feeling for a while. The sewing projects I'm choosing are basically current me living childhood me's best life, and I am so down for that. I've already got a good jump on the whole pirate side of things, so I decided the next thing to tackle was a fantasy woodland ranger. Basically, think Faramir meets Aragorn with a little dash of Legolas. So this is not one singular sewing project today, but a bunch of little projects, and each of them were easily completed within a couple of hours. The first step for any woodland ranger is a cloak. There are tons of different styles of cloaks, each with their own pros and cons. There are semicircle cloaks, Celtic Ruana cloaks, Gord cloaks, and more. And most styles of cloaks are really easy to put together. I had planned to try a semicircle cloak for this project, but once I cut the fabric to the measurements I wanted, I realized I messed up. I was supposed to fold the fabric to those measurements. And since I didn't want a seam at the back, I went through a brief existential crisis before looking at the cloaks I've made previously and deciding why reinvent the wheel. So this is a super easy way of making a cloak. I will link the tutorial I use below, and you could definitely whip one up in an afternoon. You know, if you're ever going through one of those, I need to possess a squishy cloak within the hour moments in your life. I started by marking down how long I wanted the cloak to be. Most of my other cloaks are ankle length, but for traversing the forest, I wanted something more like the fellowship cloak, which reaches mid-calf. I wanted the hood to be as deep as possible for those brooding in the back corner of a tavern moments. So I took the remaining rectangle of the fabric and curved one side for the back. There are patterns out there for pointy hoods, but I find a square or rounded shape looks best on me. I stitched up the back of the hood, and since the curve was shallow enough, I used a French seam to finish off the raw edges. For the body of the cloak, I did a simple narrow hem around three sides, turning the raw edges under twice. Then I made a row of gathers by hand along the top edge, the one that didn't get hemmed. The front edge of the hood I hemmed by hand, felling down the hem with some funky silk thread I got from Devere Yarns. The outer edges of the hood get pinned to the outer edges of the cloak, and then the body of the cloak gets gathered to fit the hood. Then the gathers get stitched down by machine. To finish off the raw edge where the hood and body meet, I stitched on a bit of bias tape. I didn't have anything in my stash that color matched, but this was the nicest contrasting color, and it goes well with the shirt in this outfit. For closures, I used a pair of metal beads, stitching them on near the hood and securing with a bit of leather cording. This cloak is super simple, wonderfully swooshy, and fantastic for fantasy adventures. The only change I'm planning to make is to add a pair of slits near the right shoulder and left waist so I can thread my quiver through my cloak and I'm not bunching the straps around the fabric and compromising mobility or swooshability. I wanted some kind of 
vesty, tabard kind of thing, so I took inspiration from Faramir's ranger outfit. This looks like a really simple vest with grommets at the side seams and a tie closure at the front. I had this large leftover piece of forest green twill from when I made my brother a cloak, so I thought it fitting to use for my own fantasy outfit. I pinned two narrower pieces to the wider back piece and used the collar of one of my favorite shirts as a guide for this collar. I also trimmed the narrow pieces down a bit since they were a little bit too wide. The shoulders get seamed together and I used a French seam for these bits too. Then I pinned a narrow hem all the way around and this was the most time consuming part of making this vest. It's all one piece, so it's all one continuous hem, but it took a long time to pin. Then it's just a quick seam all the way around. And around. And around. Then I added grommets at the sides. This was my first time playing with a grommet setter, so there was a bit of a learning curve, but by the end of this video I was fairly comfortable with how to use this new tool. I was on a bit of a time crunch at this point, so I skipped filming the last bit where I threaded the cording through the grommets so that it laced up at the side. But that's it, the vest is finished. It could use a tiny bit of finessing, but overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, the rangers you see in images or movies tend to be archers, and they all have a pair of bracers or van braces. Now, I'm going to be pedantic here and point out that you don't actually need a pair of bracers, you really only need one on the arm that is holding the bow like with modern archery. But this is such a minor detail, and our brains do love symmetry, so a pair of bracers it is. I drafted my own pattern for this, measuring the circumference of my wrist and forearm, and the length I wanted it to be. I made it kind of pointy, and cut out the base pattern. I tried it on, made a couple quick adjustments for fit, and it was ready to go. I stole a tiny bit of this nice soft leather from my brother, and since there are no seams, there is no need for seam allowance when cutting. I also went in with my rotary cutter and trimmed off the tiny bit of sharpie that could still be seen. The grommet placements got marked, and then it was back outside for more grommety hammering. I bought this kit off Amazon, and while it served its purpose well enough, I can definitely see myself upgrading to a better system if I end up making a significant amount of clothing with grommets. These look really cool right now, but after wearing them for a few hours, some of them started to come loose, so I'll have to sew over them to keep them in place. I used the same cording as the vest to lace my bracers up, and gave them a super fast try on to make sure everything was good. The last piece I made was kind of extra, not entirely necessary, but I did see it in a lot of inspiration images, so I had to make it. And that is a cowl. I went with an infinity scarf style for this, since it allows you to wear it as a cowl, a long scarf, to obscure your identity, or even as an extra hood. I used this slightly shiny, shot silk style fabric left over from the lining of my brother's cloak. Seriously, as long as you've got the right color palette, you can make a lot of a ranger kit from scraps of fabric. I cut a big rectangle and pinned the long sides together. Then I stitched down the long side, and since this fabric tended to shift and fray, I used a zigzag stitch for extra security. 
Before flipping the tube right side out, I pinned the short edges together, going around as far as I could. There comes a time when you simply cannot finagle any further, and that was when I took my cowl off the machine, flipped it right side out, and stitched the last bit up by hand. And all that was left was to grab other pieces from my closet to pull everything together. I used the pants from my Helm's Deep Eowyn cosplay, my Richard Cipher fantasy shirt, a thrifted belt, and a pair of adventure boots that I wear on a regular basis in everyday life. Add in a little dagger, my leather quiver, and bow, and we are ready to go adventuring. This outfit definitely fulfilled my goal of being an awesome fantasy ranger, and having not tried on the entire outfit before I filmed the reveal, I was kind of blown away at the time with just how awesome everything looked. My teenage weirdo self is very happy right now.